Thursday night Bible study in Skagit County, Washington sounds like your normal men's prayer meeting. The laying of hands isn't unusual, but it took these men some time to be comfortable receiving God's love through touch. Chris Hoke met most of them as chaplain of the county jail. In the jail, no one, guys don't touch. And on the streets they wouldn't. I think the only place they'd have it is just an over-sexualized sense of touch with, with girlfriends. Julio was one of those inmates. A lot of times there's guys that they're scared of being touched because they need to put up a front with that tough guy role. And when someone, just some stranger comes in and tells you he loves you and he gives you a hug, it's something you're not used to. It's, it's a feeling that you feel that somebody cares about you. It was surprising how much guys wanted a hug right when they came through that door. Just boom, they'd want a hug. And some guys would say, you know, sometimes I come just to get my fix. I saw how much there's a hunger there for it, if it's healthy. If you want to hold it. So why this hunger for touch? According to neuroscientists, our brains are programmed for touch. There is a whole array of compounds that play together in order to allow touch and social interactions to affect our brain. This is the hypothalamus right here. The hypothalamus area of the brain produces oxytocin, which is released upon positive touch. That compound can reduce fear and increase trust. For many of these men, positive touch played a huge role in their healing and growth. But then one day, the jail instituted a no-contact rule. Inmates were allowed only what they called a business handshake, and chaplains were told to reject anything else. How did that loss of touch start to affect the inmates? At first, I, I, it, to me, it seemed like the guys almost became more violent. It seemed to me, especially in those first few weeks, that more fights were breaking out, as if they were swinging for some kind of contact. Dr. Oravich is not surprised at this reaction. The lack of touching causes all kinds of changes in brain development and brain organization. In the mid-1900s, Dr. Harry Harlow found this in experiments where he deprived monkeys of physical contact from birth. The results were heartbreaking. If you take a social creature and isolate it and look at a part of the brain called the hippocampal formation, Psychosocial deprivation actually causes a physical injury to that particular part of the brain. Our brains were designed to be with other brains. Research shows the first sense developed in the womb is touch, as early as eight weeks, highlighting the need for proper touch from day one. At Centera Princess Anne Hospital in Virginia Beach, new mother Rebecca chose to participate in an increasingly popular practice called skin to skin. For skin to skin, immediately after birth, we try to have the baby go directly onto the mom's abdomen. Um, so the mom immediately gets to hold and feel her baby. 40 years of research shows this contact leads to many benefits for babies and their mothers. How did it feel when you first got to hold him skin to skin? Um, it was an indescribable feeling. Um, as soon as they put them skin to skin, that bond was there. That secure bond gives baby Bryce a foundation that can help him throughout life, from academics to sports. In sports, trust between teammates is critical. So if positive touch creates trust, how could that help a team's performance? To find the answer, scientists left the lab and headed to the basketball court. Researchers at the University of California at Berkeley studied basketball teams over a complete season. After determining 12 types of positive touch between teammates during gameplay, they detailed the occurrence and duration of each one. Their results showed the touchier players in teams actually performed better than their counterparts. At the Bible study, these former inmates, who could only rely on themselves in prison, now learn to count on others. Chaplain Chris Hope credits that to Jesus and how he's touched these men's lives. I think that's what God came to do, is to touch us. Jesus crossed such a span between us um, so that we could be one. And so I think the touch is just the beginning of that, of, of a love story. I feel like there's a intimacy with, with, with Jesus when two men are, are touching each other and praying for each other. It's, you can feel the energy when someone is putting their hands on you praying for you. You can feel the power of Christ going through that person's hands and going into your body. Caitlin Burke, CBN News.